dear friends, thank you for joining me today for another, another analysis of uh, some Seventh-day Adventist uh, presenters about the uh, question of God, the Holy Spirit. I would like to present to you T. Gibson and uh, David Asherick. Before I will uh, compare their understanding of uh, uh, who God the Holy Spirit is and also their reading of Steps to Christ by Ellen G. White, let me show to you some of the clips before what they used to believe, uh, what they used to believe and still believe even until today. But before I do share with you some clips and some analysis, I would like to invite you for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, give me wisdom through your Holy Spirit, that I may clearly show your word to your people. Your name must be glorified and honored, the only true God, Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, and the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, works in our hearts and our minds. In the name of the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, amen. So today I would like to briefly show to you the, the belief of T. Gibson and D. David Asherick. Um, they are Trinitarian, but I'd like to just highlight uh, their belief using some of their own words and then compare it to the reading of their of the spirit of the steps to Christ. They are try my whole point is this: they are trying to impose their Trinitarian reading to Sister Ellen G. White's Steps to Christ. And lo and behold, Sister Ellen G. White's Steps to Christ is full of non-Trinitarian language. You can never find God the Holy Spirit. This is the whole point. And they are using it, using their Trinitarian lens. So let me briefly show you um, the, the, the passionate sermon of uh, Ty and uh, uh, David. Uh, during their... Uh, public ministry and also during their um, exposition of uh, the uh, doctrine of the Trinity, especially God, the Holy Spirit. Let us listen, and I would like to make a comment here and there uh, so that you can study and investigate for yourselves if these things are true or not. Or testify in the Greek. So this is T. Gibson speaking uh, somewhere uh, Carolina, Carolina Conference of Seventh-day Adventists work. Yeah, where I am in their supposed to be territory. And um, I would like to uh, uh, note that this is seven years ago, but this is still what he believes and he preached. But I just, for clarity, just uh, uh, set you up that he is a Trinitarian who believes that the Spirit, the God, the Holy Spirit is different from the Spirit of God. That's the whole point. And he is reading John 15 and John, John 14, John 15, which I will explain to you as well. Because you have been with me from the beginning. You know me. We have a relationship that's been building. And you've entered into some kind of connection with me. So you're going to be testifying too. But previous to your testifying, or we could say concurrent with your testifying, there's going to be a testifying going on inside of you by the Holy Spirit. So I'm leaving, but the communication pathway between you and me is going to remain open. That, that's my way of saying it, but that's basically what Jesus is indicating. I'm leaving, but the helper is coming. The word helper. So now he's trying to uh, direct the attention of the people that Jesus John 14, John 15, it's clear of the Father and the Son. Now he is trying to split the uh, Holy Spirit apart from the Spirit of Jesus or the Spirit of Christ. So he is essentially, is essentially leading, leading people to believe in God, the Holy Spirit, another comforter and helper. He's trying to explain. That's the whole point. Here in the Greek is parakletos. Everybody say parakletos. That word basically means, in so many words, replica. So there you go. He's trying to say that Jesus, by sending, by saying from John 15, verses 26 to 27, which he will quote later on in the video or a few minutes, 
He's saying that the Holy Spirit is different or replica, separate from, separate from the, uh, the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ. So that is his main thesis. Like Leah to Sue. It basically means... So there is this illustration, Leah to Sue. So they are different. So this is to split our, our attention that the Holy Spirit that John 14... And 15 is saying, it's not the spirit of Christ himself. It's another God, the Holy Spirit. That is, in essence, the whole point. But you may not see it if you have not read carefully what the Bible is saying in John 14 and in John 15. Means one like me. There's a lot of similarity between the one I'm sending. So listen to the words. A lot of similarity, meaning to say they are not the same because he is harping on God, the Holy Spirit, a different a person. Co-eternal, meaning he's self-existing on his own, apart from the independent from God, the Fa God, the, our infant father and Jesus Christ, the son of God. So that is uh, his um, exposition about the Holy Spirit. And he is carrying it until today, which I will show you in his latest video with David Asher. And who I am. The Holy Spirit is the parakletos. The Holy Spirit is the one who's coming to you. And when the Holy Spirit comes, you'll know that it is the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will testify of me. There will be a, a growing awareness of everything that I have been to you and I'm going to the cross. I'm going to die. So basically what he's saying is Jesus is sending another person. But if you read John 14, verse 18, Jesus already answered his own statement about sending another comforter from God or the spirit of truth. He's saying in verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Meaning. Jesus, though his statement appears to be third person, but he was speaking about himself. And verse 18 satisfies it, that it is the spirit of Christ. Not what T. T Gibson is saying, another or parakleta, Leia and Sue. Meaning to say, he is just leading the church of God or the people of God who, who, are, uh, who are listening to him to think or imagine of another God, the Holy Spirit. And that is the dangerous part. And I will not continue the video, but I already told you that Jesus is talking in the third person about himself. In verse 18 of John 14, it's clear. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come. So if you will under, if you will accept what T. Gibson is saying, then there are two spirits in your hearts, the spirit of Christ and God, the Holy Spirit. And that is hard to, to unstick because that is part of the deception. Now let's go to his uh, sidekick buddy, David Asherek, Asherek. Family, one flesh, in the same sense that the people- He's talking about the, uh, about the Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 uh, in, in his presentation about the Genesis 126, I mean, also explaining let us make man in our image, meaning, but he's alluding to three, the Trinity, as you could listen further. People are unified in language. They are unified in purpose. This is why, as Christians, we affirm this glorious, wonderful, sublime, and yet mysterious truth that God is one. So he's saying that Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 is mysterious because he will define it as not necessarily literally one. It is, he is defining it spiritually as united, meaning there are three there in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, which he is um, trying to defend it by using the Hebrew uh, Elohim, which is not what it, it's supposed to mean, according to him. It's supposed to mean the, the, the majority of the, uh, the plurality of God's attribute, but there is only one God monotheism so listen to his word mysterious he wants to lead the people of god to say now you cannot understand one when it is revealed in deuteronomy 6 verse 4 you have to put it in deuteronomy uh, genesis chapter 1 verse 26 which is let us make so in his conclusion it's not a mystery that is three it, when he says trinity he's not saying mystery it's clear but when you when you read the bible deuteronomy 6 verse 4 it is a mystery that is where the deception leading people 
to 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 a well that is that has no water to a to a digging a hole that has no water misleading people to what the bible does not say but you are saying that that is what the bible says so this is what david asherick uh craftily cunningly and expertly does so that people will be split oh okay so it's not the father and the son in genesis 1 26 it's trying god's trinity god the father god the son god the Holy spirit that is what he's trying to drive let us listen a little bit more further and then compare it with his latest video with his sidekick robin and batman t gibson is three persons that comprise one god now that's sort of the old testament that gets us headed in a direction we transition now to the new testament we're going to look at several passages in the new testament that strongly suggests what is implicit in the Old Testament becomes increasingly explicit in the New Testament. And we run so it's not mysterious anymore when he is trying to translate and uh, revise what the Bible says in the Old Testament, that there is only one. The Lord our God is one Lord. He was trying to say, now you will see that there are three in the New Testament, which is leading again to a, a well that is empty of water. Run into so many passages in which in which God is very explicitly, I would say, communicating not just plurality, but now triunity, not just triunity. So I will not go further because you, now it's established. T. Gibson believes in God, the Holy Spirit. His uh, buddy, David Asherick, believes in God, the Holy Spirit. They are splitting Genesis 1, and Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. But they have forgotten First Samuel 2, verse 2. There is none like God. In Exodus 20, verse 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And all the rest of uh, the, the scriptures, Proverbs 30, verse 4, the Father and the Son before creation. And they are adding God, the Holy Spirit. Now let us go to their interpretation of spirit of, of prophecy. Oh, I mean, sorry. Steps to Christ. I'm sorry. I've been reading steps, uh, Spirit of Prophecy and Steps to Christ simultaneously. I mean not simultaneously. Um, back to back so that my brain is sometimes saying Steps to Christ, but I'm thinking of Spirit of Prophecy and Spirit of Prophecy thinking of Steps to Christ. We are now here on their um, uh, channel, David Asherick's channel, um, talking about repentance from the steps to Christ. Now, I will show you how deliberate they are in quoting only one, one, um, one quotation or one sentence from the book of Ellen G. White, imposing to, uh, to the people that Ellen G. White was a Trinitarian. Because if you read the steps to Christ, this is my point, this is my whole point. If you read the steps to Christ, you can never find Trinitarian language. God, the Holy Spirit is not there. It's always Spirit of God and Spirit of Christ. The Holy, Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ and the, and the Spirit of God. They will not bring that up as I will just show you a brief uh, uh, a brief video of them. It's just, just a long and people are, as I've said, they are misleading people, leading them to believe what they believe using the text, which is not what the text meant. meant. The text is literal, Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. And the text is clear in the, in the minds of Ellen G. White, Genesis 1, 26. It's the Father and the Son. Spirit of prophecy says to us. So this man, if you are not reading, will mislead you to dig a hole looking for water that is not there. But they say that there is water in that hole. So that is what I'm trying to show to you and analyze. Well, prophecy in the Old Testament where Jesus is called the desire of all people, if they knew what they wanted, they'd put a name to it, and the name would be Jesus, right? So, 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 so we have the spirit of prophecy. Uh, a spirit of prophecy in the steps to Christ. Now that they are reading, is clear about who, who, uh, who the Jesus, the who Jesus is revealing. That is his father, and of course, the Old Testament, the mediator is the Jesus Christ. We know that, and the New Testament, the mediator is Jesus Christ in the flesh, and right now, our mediator is Jesus Christ, who is the chief. Huh? Um, the chief, uh, the the chief high priest. So in the Old Testament, it was Jesus, the Son of God, the divine Son of God. In the New Testament, it's Jesus. He 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 became a flesh, he became the Son of Man. And in the in our dispensation today, he is Jesus, the high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. So Jesus throughout all the the, the revelation of the, the the salvation history. That's clear. 
have before us a God named desire, essentially. Hmm. God bears the name desire. God so now he's trying to confuse people. God names them. Jesus is the son of God. He is described in the Old Testament, prophet Haggai, as the desire of ages because he was the one who mediate between sinners and the Father. And that is clear. So T. Gibson is clearly leading on people to understand God the Son, which is not in the Bible, which is not in the spirit of, of prophecy, nor in what he is reading, steps to Christ. So he's putting a doctrine using the Trinitarian lens, using the Trinitarian glasses, mindset, so that people will believe that steps to Christ is Trinitarian, which is not. I will show you in a moment. God, who are you? Well, well I'm Yahweh. God, who are you? I'm the bread of life. God, who are you? Those are the names given to Jesus Christ from his father. I am desire itself. Hmm. If you knew, if you knew what you really wanted at the deepest level of your wanting, you would know that you want me. And the reason you want me is because I want you. Hmm. So we're constantly, we're constantly under the influence. And this is remarkable to me. I, I put inordinately large exclamation points next to everything <laughs> you read before you read it. Yeah. And we didn't compare notes on this. I right. was just like, wham, wham, wham with yeah. exclamation points. Because look at this. The same divine mind, you read this, that is working upon the things of nature is speaking to the hearts of men and creating an inexpressible craving for something they have not. Yeah. So it's this is the reading that they, uh, T. Gibson, original 1892 Steps to Christ, the same divine mind that is working upon the things of nature is speaking to the hearts of men and creating an inexpressible craving for something they have not. He did not read the next two sentences. The things of the world cannot satisfy their longing. Well, he harped on that, but the next sentence, the spirit of God is pleading with them to seek for those things that alone can give peace and rest, the grace of Christ. There, there are only two beings in the in 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 the heavenly divine court or throne room, the Father and the Son. That is clear in steps to Christ. Because he is a Trinitarian, he wants to us to believe that the Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, is the one that is used that is being used to draw men and also Jesus as another God, the whole God that that will confuse the mind. My point here being, brethren, is these two people, T. Uh, Gibson and David Asherick, is reading Trinitarian lens in a non-Trinitarian book. That is my whole point. They omit this. You can, you can watch the whole video in uh, David Asherick's YouTube channel. They are omitting the Spirit of God because to them, the Spirit of God is different from God the Holy Spirit. Because if they do believe that the Spirit of God is the same as God the Holy Spirit, then the Trinity doctrine idea crumbles because Sister Ellen G. White was, in her book, Steps to Christ, was a non-Trinitarian. So friends, investigate for yourselves. And I would like to read a quote from Steps to Christ. We should not take the testimony of any man, T. Gibson or David Asherick, including, and including myself, as to what the scriptures teach. Just like how they quote Genesis 1, 26, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. But study the words of God for ourselves. Steps to Christ, 1892, page 103. I think that is clear. And I wrote that in my, uh, I mean, I, I've shared that in my, uh, uh, to my friends today. May God the Father and His only, uh, only Son, Jesus Christ, bless you and keep you and guide you to all truth. This is my desire. Please search the truth, friends. Do not just believe on mere men who have their lenses on to study and share the Holy Word of God. I pray that the pure words of Christ be revealed and exposed.